When it comes to printing off your worksheets here, you're going to get buffers on all four sides, your top, bottom, left, and right, and those are the margin areas. In other words, by default, I think the margins on the left, right side are about 0 .7, 0 .75. To find out, come up here, click on the Page Layout tab, go to the Page Setup group, click on the Margins drop-down arrow, and you can see that Microsoft or Excel has some default margins it thinks is normal, with a left of 0 .7 or almost 3 quarters of an inch. A wide margin would be one inch on all sides. Narrow would be, well, there are the numbers there. It also remembers the custom that I had set up. In other words, if I come down here and click on custom margins and I make some changes and apply it, it'll go ahead and remember that in the margins drop down arrow setting as we just saw there. So there's one way to get to the uh, page setup window to the margins tab. The other way, let me close out, is to click on its expandable dialog box button and then clicking on the margins tab or let me go ahead and close out. You can go file down to print and look at the preview and get an idea of where your margins at at least visually you can see that you've got some space there space up at the top at the bottom and to the right but of course because the margins are a little bit wide it's going to cut off some of the columns so I have to go over to page 3 and there's the remainder two columns rate and gross and then also continues on page 4 I can make the changes here by either clicking on the well, there's custom margins, drop down arrow and go to custom margins, brings up the same window to the same tab, or there's the page setup. So there's many ways to get to it, and then click on the margins tab. And then I can go ahead and type in, well, either use the up and down arrows there, or type in a number like three inches, and then click OK. Wow, that really pushes it over to the right, or as far as it can go before it interferes with the uh, right margin. It won't bleed it into the right margin, because that's stubborn. It'll say, you can't go any further here because I'm set at this number here, in which case it'll cut it off and break it off into additional pages here. Or a blank page when it's really having issues trying to figure out where to put the data with so much data and your wide margins there. Let me go back, come down here, and instead of arrowing back, I can just go ahead and select it, type in one, hit enter, it takes me back to page one, and you can see that three inches isn't good. So I can either go back to page setup and numerically type in the uh, margins, you know, three inches, two inches, whatever, or I can do it visually here by coming over in the lower right hand corner in the print preview and you see where it says show margins, click on that and it will open up and show you your left, right margin, top, bottom and also the margins for your headers and footers and how much space you have in between those header and footers and then the top and bottom margins. So if I want to go ahead and visually move my margins around, just go ahead and hover over one of those lines until your uh, pointer turns into black arrows pointing in opposite directions. Then go ahead and click and drag and or move your mouse to the left with holding your left mouse button down until you bring more of it in and make that margin to the left a bit smaller so I can see more of my data. In fact, if I click and drag it all the way to the left, I get most of all of my columns there. I'm still missing gross, so let me click and drag the right margin to the right. And it looks like I've got everything. But if it's just doing a tight squeeze, then when I go ahead and I go to page 2 and 3, if it's a tight enough squeeze, it's going to leave us a blank page, which isn't nice. So you can try to adjust the margins or change the page orientation to something wider, like a widescreen layout or landscape. Or let me go ahead and go back to page 1 here, and let's drag in the margins a bit. So I can show you that after we're done with print preview, once we're in here and we get back out, go back to the Home tab, as a courtesy, you'll give us a, a bunch of little dots here that shows that that's where the page break is at, or where it's breaking. So it cuts off these two columns here. In fact, if I scroll down, eventually it needs to break by row, and say this is page 1, and that's page 2. And then we come over here, this is going to be page 3, and that's going to be page 4. So you've got your quadrants here, it's going from top to bottom, and then from, well, once it's done with left, it goes over to right, top to bottom when it's breaking like that. So the only other real option that I have, let me scroll to the top, at least as far as this training video is concerned, is that maybe I want to go ahead and collapse and bring those uh, columns in tighter so it can go ahead and page break after these two columns and not before it. So if I come up here, hover in between the two column headers, click and drag and move that column in, it brings it in. The page break is now between rate and gross and not before rate and gross. If I go ahead and try to well, double click really fast in between the two column headers. It collapses and does a best fit for that column. Let me do a few more. Now it breaks after all of my columns here. So, in fact, let me go ahead and just click and drag that in. And let me do double click here. And let me see if I can double click a bit more and a bit more. So now it breaks over into an empty column here, J. So it'll fit all this in plus, um, well, 
an extra column there, which isn't going to print, of course. Click on the file, go down to print. There's my print preview. Now I'm on two pages. I don't have a third page that's blank, so I don't print off a blank page there. Then, of course, let me go back to page one. I still got my margins showing here, so visually I can come up here. And if I want to center that more in the page, then just click and drag that until it looks about, oh, yay so. Then when I'm finished looking at the margins, just of course come back down here, click on the first button there, show margins, to unselect it, removes the margins, and now you've got two ways of doing this. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.